class have in fact choice for their children. They will be able to find a school. And in some respects, if they don't like the school in the neighborhood, because they, they know how to work the process, they get a variance. If they don't get a variance, they're able to move if they have to. And one of the things we've done in New York, and it's been controversial, but I'm going to put it right out there, is we have created lots of choices in communities. And you know what the result of that is? I wish everyone in this room could have been in, in Harlem with me on Saturday. We had an affair, an affair, we had a fair. <laughs> I'm cooked now. All the Freudians out there are having a ball. We had a fair in Harlem. 5,000 African American families, parents and kids, looking at all the various options that were created for them. And you know what happens? The schools react to that. The schools begin to see the parents as fundamentally, and I'm not trying to use a business term, but as fundamentally those are the consumers, those are the constituency that they have to, and there's a quote in the New York Times, and that was very interesting, uh, one of the public schools is there, and they said to the principal, why are you here at the fair? And she said, I'm here at the fair because we've got something great for these kids, and I want the parents to know about it, because if they don't know about us, they're gonna go someplace else. And that is the power of empowering parents to make choice. It's not without it's controversy, and we see some of it being played out at the national level in D.C. right now uh, with, with the scholarship program they had. But in New York City, we have moved more to a real choice by creating options for people in various communities and letting them vote with their feet. And I think that's a powerful way to remind the school that you're not in existence for your own good and welfare. You're in existence to serve the kids and the parents regardless of what their family is. I, I 